Good morning, church. So good you could be here. The Lord rejoices over you. We take joy seriously at the Rock Church. We are starting a brand new series this morning. Oh, if you're wondering about these direct decorations, just thought I'd clear this up. We wanted to make sure that we celebrated Mother's Day two weeks ago, one week? Last week. And so we just wanted to leave the decorations up for another week because it takes a lot of effort to put these things up. And, and, we, and you can take photos down there. You may have seen photos on Instagram. So we decided to leave things up for another week so you could celebrate our mums. So today we are bringing a brand new series and it is called Shine. Shine. Look at that. I love our tech team. Amazing people. What is it about? This is going to go for a few weeks and today I'm going to lead us into this. But ultimately at the end of the day, it's about the Holy Spirit. We're going to have multiple preachers up here and we are going to be unpacking things like, well, who is he? Not, not it, he's not an it. Who is the Holy Spirit? Let's unpack why do you need him? Is he with us right now? Yes, he is. We want these things that we need to know. Jesus has put it on my heart and I'm probably going to say this for the rest of the year. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. Learn from me. I think so many of us have learned how to do church and this is not a negative, but I think we need to learn from Jesus. Let's learn. You know why? Because he said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. If you're not walking in the lightness of God with an easy yoke, maybe we haven't learned. I know we know the difficulties will come in life. We know that. That's why we build upon the rock, the word of God. But let's learn from Jesus. We want to know who is this Holy Spirit? Who are you, Holy Spirit? We want to know about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the power of God. Because if we walk by the Spirit... We will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. And one of the greatest moves of the Holy Spirit that I have seen is a change of character. When a person starts to walk in love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness and faithfulness and self-control, to me, I'm seeing more and more, it is an incredible evidence of the Holy Spirit moving in your life. Because you can have amazing miracles and still be not shining the way you should be. I used a different word during the week, didn't I, honey? I don't know if I should say that. I won't. See that? That was self-control right there. <laughs> go me. Well, there you go. I'm sorry, Lord. Go you. How easy do we slip up? Goodness me. Father, I thank you this morning that it's you speaking through me. Father, I thank you, God, that look, I'm on this platform, but it's your platform. This is your church. You build your church according to your will. Well, Father, we, we thank you this morning that we can hear your voice. We can learn from you, grow in you, know you. In Jesus' name, let your word come forth in power. Amen. In the book of Exodus, chapter 34... Moses has led a lot of people out of Egypt and on that journey he finds himself going up to meet God. When you read that story, it's a great read. Initially, the, you know, the Hebrew slaves, the whole nation, the Israelites are all together around the bottom of the mountain. There were, there were borders that they weren't allowed to touch the mountain, go up on the mountain. But when you actually read it, it, it says that God wanted to hear he wanted them to hear him. God wanted his voice to be heard as he spoke to Moses when you actually read it. So, and, and, Moses, and God was putting his stamp and he was bringing in laws. He was bringing in his character. He was, he was birthing a nation from nothing when he did that. And he went up on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights, it says. What ended up happening during that time is that, and I say this joke every time I sort of go down this road. So what does Aaron, sorry, Moses' brother, Aaron, it's his older brother apparently, I looked it up, 
decides, because under the pressure of the people, all the people decide, where is this Moses? Where is he? As so they decide to put Aaron under incredible pressure, we want God or a God. And so they persuade Moses, sorry, they persuade Aaron to collect all the gold, all the, whatever they had to do, and it says that Aaron chiselled a golden calf. He made it. He lied later when he said, I just threw the gold into the fire and it came out, this calf. He actually lied. Okay, but we all know, because it says clearly, he made the thing. He actually built an altar to it. And they all started to have this amazing party. Sometimes I think churches can be a little bit like that. We start taking up a collection. We start doing things and doing great things, but it's actually not God. We actually can. You can you know, churches can become an idol. The way we do church, but it's not God. And so it's so important that we recognise those things. And what ended up happening is that when Moses came down from the mountain, God wants to wipe them out. And Moses has a really good chat and he says, don't do that. You, otherwise the whole world's going to go, you got us out of Egypt and then wipe them out. What sort of a God is this? So Moses has a really good conversation with God and God changes his mind. He says, okay, well, I won't do that, but we've got to clean up this place. So they clean up the place. There's a big fight amongst all the Israelites. And... Um, you can read it for yourself. I prefer you did that. Go to the Bible for yourself. Don't just listen to me. Search the scriptures yourself. And what ended up happening is that they get rid of the golden calf. Moses, it, Moses takes his calf, he pounds it to dust, throws it in the water, and he makes the people drink it. Man, that is one tough pastor. <laughs> Seriously, because the assistant pastor went and made a golden calf. I didn't mean to look at you when I said that, Josh. <laughs> You're going to have to move seats, man. Like... So Moses goes back up on the hill again for another 40 days and another 40 nights. I mean, this guy is doing a back-to-back -back fast. Huge. But then something incredible happens. Oh, by the way, he smashed all Ten Commandments, broke them. They were written by God, literally. He chisels more in stone, goes back up on the mountain. And now he's coming back down for the second time. And this is what happened on the slide. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai, the two tablets of the testimony were in Moses' hand. When he came down from the mountain... Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone while he was talking with him, him being God. And I have a little, um, oh, actually, before I go to the next one, well, there's a little picture now. And remember, if I put a picture on the screen, I know, don't get funny with me, I know it's an illustration, somebody's idea, all right? It's like, well, maybe he didn't look like that. I don't know what he looked like. So if you're really good artistically, there's hardly any pictures of that. Why don't you draw one? Because there's nothing on the internet like it. All right? Come up with a better one. But imagine coming down from the mountain and your face is glowing. Here's what I know when people get born again, and I have seen this, and I know other people can testify to this. When somebody gives their heart to Jesus Christ and the sin is lifted off their life, have you ever noticed their face looks a little bit different when you see them the next week? How many, how many have you said, how many have you actually gone up to them and gone, you know, you look different. You, you look like, like before they get born again, it's like when you smile, it's like cracking the clay. But then they get born again and it's like God just releases them from all of their sin and then they just look different. You just, you start to talk different, sound different. Things start to change. You didn't do anything. But you change straight away. You start to want to act differently straight away. You're born again. Your countenance changes straight away. But you may not know that. Has anyone ever had somebody say to them, you look different? Show me a big wave. It's true. Look how many people. Somebody said to you, you look different today. And it's true. This is what happens. But something Moses did, and I'll show you another photo. How weird is this? He would cover his face with a veil. Have you read that? It's a really cool read. So what would happen every time he went in? Oh, I shall read it for you. 
It says, when Moses, this is in Exodus chapter 34, verse 29, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai carrying two stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant, he wasn't aware that his face had become radiant because he had spoken to the Lord. So when Aaron and the people of Israel saw the radiance of Moses' face, they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called out to them and Aaron and asked Aaron and all the leaders of the community to come over and he talked with them. Then all the people of Israel approached him and Moses gave them all the instructions the Lord had given him on Mount Sinai. When Moses finished speaking with them, he covered his face with a veil. So bizarre. But whenever he went into the tent of meeting to speak with the Lord, he would remove the veil until he came out again. Then he would give the people whatever instructions the Lord had given him and the people of Israel would see the radiant glow of his face. So he would put the veil over his face until, until he returned to speak with the Lord. I just cannot imagine if I got up here and I put a veil over my face. That would be so cool if you all just said, you're glowing right now, Pastor Bill. Yeah, anyway. There's a saying, and well, I'm saying this because someone said it to me, um, that if you really want to understand to learn the Old Testament, the answers that you want from the Old Testament are actually written in the New Testament. If you'll search it out enough, you'll find all the answers that you want to know about the Old and what was happening are written in the New. And so let me read what's happening in the New Testament. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. It says this, The old way with laws etched in stone led to death. The old laws, we're talking about the Ten Commandments and the old Levitical laws. The old laws, well actually it is the Ten Commandments because it says etched in stone, led to death. Though it began with such glory that the people of Israel could not bear to look at Moses' face. For his face shone with the glory of God even though the brightness was already fading away. Shouldn't we expect, Rock Church, far greater glory under the new way? Now that the Holy Spirit is giving life. Who's giving life? The Holy Spirit. If the old way, which brings condemnation, was glorious, how much more glorious is the new way, which makes us right with God? One of the biggest fights I see in the church at the moment is people struggling to accept or to believe they're actually right with God. But you are right with God by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's settled on the cross. It was finished. He says he's made you holy, blameless. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are seated at the right hand of the Father in Christ Jesus. You are a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. The Bible says he's taken your sins. He's separated them as far as the east is from the west. You are a new creation. If the old way was glorious, how much more can we stand up and go, God, you are awesome because he shines in you. You are a new creation today. God loves you. While you were sinning, he died for you. Not when you got it all together. Shouldn't we expect far more greater glory under the new way now that the Holy Spirit is giving life? If the old way which brings condemnation was glorious, how much more glorious is the new way which makes us right with God? In fact, that first glory was not glorious at all compared with the overwhelming glory of the new way. So if the old way, which has been replaced. Everybody say replaced. It is not an add-on. The new way is not an add-on to the old. It is a replacement. We are under a new covenant. If the old way which has been replaced, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? I heard someone say it's so obvious even a theologian could work it out. That just made me laugh once. I hope you got a laugh out of that. We're all theologians. If you read the Bible, you're a theologian. It was more glorious. How much more glorious is the new way which remains forever? Amen. It does not fade away. He covered his face because he knew the glory of what was of God. It was going to fade away. He knew that the Ten Commandments are glorious. He knew they were awesome, but it was fading. They were unable to remain forever. But we now have a new covenant and it remains forever. And that's why we can shine for Jesus Christ forever. You are the light of the world. Slide number four. 
You don't need to know that. Don't need to <laughs> go again. You are the light of the world. Like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden, no one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. We can shine for Jesus. Because you belong to Jesus. Theodore Roosevelt, 26th President of the United States. He was the youngest president at 42. Imagine running a country at 42. 42 years of age and he said this, Do what you can with what you have where you are. Do what you can with what you have where you are. I got a quote here by Charles Spurgeon. The Bible is not the light of the world, it is the light of the church. But the world does not read the Bible, the world reads Christians. You are the light of the world. There's a saying that goes, you may be the only Bible a person ever reads. You may be the only Jesus a person ever meets. How cool is it? Or how, how should we grasp that? That every time you talk to somebody who doesn't know Jesus Christ... They're reading you. You know, you can jump up and down all you like and say, well, they shouldn't judge you. Well, they are. You can jump up and down all you like. It's like Facebook. I hate Facebook, but it just won't go away. Jump up and down all I like. It's not going to go away. In the same way, people make judgments. That's life. That's just reality. Gravity is a reality you have to deal with. So let's make sure that when people read us, they read the right book and it goes all the way from the cover (laughs) right down into the depths (laughs) and it's so important that we bring the best that we can bring and represent Jesus as the light of the world I was in a um winter and I went shopping and, and I got this lovely shirt yay yay if, if you think I'm evangelistic, you need to go shopping with my wife. Honestly. My, my wife is the only person I know who can tell you exactly the way things are and you're still happy about it. <laughs> Honestly. Oh, I do that and I just offend people. I, I, anyway, let's not go. Well, I don't actually. Anyway, whatever. I'm in the shopping centre and I'm trying on this beautiful shirt and there's a bit of a flash place and... Um, you know, I'm looking on the half-price rack as usual. And um, Edwina goes, oh, the girl comes over and there's people in the shop and in the middle of the Katara shopping centre in Newcastle and this girl comes over and she goes, oh, is it your day off? I mean, we get this all the time. Shopping is 20 minutes shopping, two hours of evangelism. Sometimes. It goes like that. And she, and she goes... No, 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 my husband's preaching on Sunday and he needs a new shirt. I'm like, okay, here we go. And a guy like on the other side of the shop yells out something about the five-fold ministry. I don't even know what he said. I was still trying to work out what to do with what Edwina said. And, I was, and, he, and he, he rabbited off something, and I'm going to say rabbited because it's like, dude, you sort of got to calm down or take notice of where you are or, or something, all right? And so he yells out, yeah, the five-fold ministry, blah, blah, blah. And I think he probably quoted all five and all this sort of stuff. And, and I'm like, okay, okay. And then I got the shop assistant there looking at him and looking at you and looking at me, and I'm just, I just want to buy a shirt. And I'm like... Anyway, we move on. I get to this guy and I'm like, I can't just walk out the shop. He must be a Christian. Could be second guessing. I said, hello. You, um, you made a comment about, about, I heard you say something. Was it like, you're from Nelson Bay? And he's like, no, 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 no. And he went and he just launched. He just launched into what was happening in Israel. And I'm like, 
okay. And he, and he was talking about it and he could tell me when Jesus was coming back. He could tell me everything there was to know about Israel. He could tell me about the fivefold ministry. He could tell me all the prophecies. He could hear it. And then, and then it was like, and Edwina and I, and we were sort of like, mm, mm, yep. Mm, mm. And I'm, I was, I, it wasn't him I was worried about. It was the shop assistants going, who the heck is this guy? Right? You want to be the light, not the loser. Now, that's a terrible thing to say. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry. Sorry. Please forgive me. You should never say that about someone. He belongs to Jesus. Just, need, just, just help him. And what happened was he, 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 started, he was going on and he goes, what are we going to do? He's talking about Israel and Palestine. What are we going to do? And I'm like, well, I'm not going to do anything. I said, well, do what we should be doing. Tell people about Jesus. Because telling them about Israel and Palestine, you're not going to save anybody. Because the, those shop assistants, 18-year-old, I don't even think they know where Israel is. Well, they don't. Be real. You've got to be real with people. They don't. And they don't care for that matter. They don't know where New Zealand is. Sorry to all the Kiwis in the house. <laughs> but... Mate, the guy's in the fight and he's fighting all the wrong things. And then he, and then he rattled off again about the sky dome is now depleted and, and, and some other thing he said, didn't he? And, and you know, and I, I must admit I, I wasn't listening too well. And he came at me again. What are we going to do? And Edwin and I said, we tell people about Jesus. Because if all the Palestinians got born again, you know the war would end, Right. You know, all the wars around the world would end if people were born again, right? And just let me help a little bit. And this is all you need to know if you're wondering what's happening over there. I am not an expert on Israel in any way, shape or form or any of that. But I know this and I've remembered this, that if, if Israel puts down its guns, they will be wiped out. Do you understand that? If they put down their guns, they will be annihilated. If the surrounding nations put down their guns, there will be peace. That's the way it is. If you're not reading that properly in the news, you're not reading the right news. It's just that simple. I said, you need to tell people about Jesus, mate. People need to come to know Christ because they change when they're born again. He didn't know what to do with us after that. Honestly, it was like he just went into some trance. He had the, he had the, the, the like, I think I'm evangelizing a Christian here. He had the, he just went into some other world and didn't know what to do. So we just moved on. God bless you. He was just caught in a fist fight but didn't know how to win the war. Let's not lose the fact of, the, of, the, of this sight that we don't fight flesh and blood. Principalities, powers of darkness, heavenly hosts of wickedness. It's a spiritual fight that we're in, not one of the flesh. Love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who say evil against you. Spitefully use you. And the Bible says when you do those things, you'll be just like your Father in heaven. You will be the light of the world. And I am not saying in any way, shape or form that that is easy. People lose their lives. I think it's something like 160,000 Christians will lose their, lose their life this year for their faith in Christ around the world. It's not easy, but it's what we're called to do. But know this, God loves you and you will never, ever die. Do not fear those who kill, kill the body, Jesus said. One of Josh's favourite lines when he preaches, he goes, what are you talking about? That's the very thing that freaks me out. Like, Don't be afraid of those who can kill the body, and after that they can do nothing to you. But fear him who can kill the body and the soul in hell. Let's lighten up. Father, thank you. <laughs> He's a good God. He's joyful and happy. Just grasp that. God wants us to join. Sorry, he wants to shine the glory of his grace. Church, you are the light of the world. We just read that. You are the light. 
can I say this? Being the light isn't something you're becoming. It's something you already are. You are the light. The moment you gave your heart to Christ, you're the light. You're it. No cavalry coming. This is it. Run your race to win. You're the light. That's it. Straight up. It says this in 2 Corinthians verse chapter 3. Clearly, you are a letter written from Christ, Christ showing the result of our ministry among you. This letter, written not with pen and ink, but with the spirit of the living God, is carved not on tablets of stone, but on human hearts. Church, you are a walking, talking, power-filled, light-bearing love letter from God. Everywhere you go. The only way that that doesn't happen properly is when we put that light under a basket. None of us are called to be undercover Christians. We get that, right? Undercover Christians. We've all met them. I've met them. We had a guy build us a whole house. We were, we were heathenistic, full-on professional sinners going to hell and he knew it and he was a born-again Christian who we worked with for four months and not once did he mention Jesus. We, Edwina, I told you, she's so straight. She just went up to him. We got born again, didn't we? And Edwina met him in the street and Edwina just said... How come, because he's a big, big guy, how come you didn't tell us about Jesus? <laughs> Straight up. He had nothing to say. It's not okay, church. You are the light of the world. You are the hope. Praise God for the boldness of the power and the Holy Spirit moving through us that we would glow in a world that is so dark. Let me tell you something else because I'm a bit of a storyteller. Am I nine minutes behind or nine minutes over, Josh? It's green. Green means go. So that goes to 35 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, was, I, I, I bought a new shirt recently. I also bought some new shoes recently. And I thought I'd better test my new shoes. Let's go for a walk. It's a beautiful autumn day. We are walking home. We're having a lovely time. We're coming up the footpath near our house. And as I'm coming up the footpath near our house, I, I for whatever reason, uh, new shoes, let's blame that. I, I put my shoe on the edge of the footpath and I, I, I'm heading for the ground. My, uh, my right leg didn't quite catch me. And the, the annoying part is I had my hand in my nice jumper and by the time I got my hand out of my jumper, it was too late. So I decided to soften the fall with my face. <laughs> true story. It was so true, Edwina is going to knock on the door of where it happened in case they had a camera so she can put it on the internet. <laughs> She's still laughing. This is a true story. I do not exact. Well, I have exaggerated in the past, but this is what happened. So when she sees me, I am my my face is in the bushes. My hands are like that because I went, and my feet are up in the air. Edwina turns to me with all of her compassion and goes, "What are you doing?" The love, the love, what are you doing? Well, I'm just face planting the earth. What, you, what, what am I doing? I'm listening for horses coming. I don't know. It'll happen. I don't know what I'm doing. That's why I'm down here. I'm serious. After she... After she stopped laughing for a good 30 seconds, she finally said, are you all right? Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> we'll get we'll get some flight here eventually. <laughs> They <laughs> just got to work out how to get that in my message, don't we? I just don't. Do, you know, look, I, if you know, if you get close to me, you will see. I'd rather have a good, happy laugh. There's enough sorrow in the world. Life's too serious to take it seriously. I say that. It's like my gosh, it is so serious. Rejoice in the Lord. Be the light. Shine, Jesus. Have some fun. Have a laugh. 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 God is so funny. So I got up and I was all right. She said, you all right? Yes, I'm all right, honey. And then she just laughed again anyway, so it didn't really matter. But here's the question. When she said, what are you doing? I ask that sometimes. You should ask yourself that. If you ever find yourself in a situation where you have lost your cool, where you are walking in unforgiveness, if you are not showing respect, if you are trying to make people bow down to your way of viewing things we have to sometimes ask what am I doing and this is a question you're asking am I being the light right now the light are you the one that's bringing the light of life the goodness of God into every situation I have a slide for this and it says let's see if it's the right one next one for once you were full of darkness, but now you have the light from the Lord, or have light from the Lord. So live as people of light. For this light within you produces only what is good and is right and is true. If it's coming out of you and it's not good, it's not the light. If it's coming out of you and it's not the truth, it's not the light. If it's coming out of you and it's not right, it's not the light. Because the light of God only produces what is good and what is right and what is true I've, I'm going to do something here yeah hang on honey I need a candle Brenda's very proud of me because I'm using a prop Yo! Here's the deal. If this is a Christian, let's say this is a born again Christian. We don't say that, but this is a born again Christian. Okay? You look like a Christian. You, um, you can come to church like this nice, white. You go to heaven, right? It's true. And that's okay. But there's more because just this doesn't light up the room if you place this in the dark it's still just dark right now you all know what I'm going to do don't you it's just this simple everybody is meant to be that because until you have that, you are not the light of the world. That is the light. Let the light so shine that people see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven, our Father in heaven. It's just not hard. The only thing that can stop that light, when you read the scripture it says, nobody puts a light um, under a basket but on a lampstand, right? Even if you, if you cut cover that the light's still there so you're still born again you're still saved you're still going to heaven the only cover-up is you don't <laughs> don't cover up don't be undercover christians the world needs the light right now today every day the glory of the lord shining through every one of us but this is what i recognize is this we're going to unpack this over the next, next couple of weeks about the power. What is this power? Well, it's the Holy Spirit in you. We need the Holy Spirit. We need to know who he is. And we want to learn from him. He's our teacher. 
He's our teacher. Think of that. Learn from him. The Bible says he will bring to remembrance everything that Jesus taught. And if we learn from Jesus, our yoke is easy, the burden is light, and we will find rest for our souls. And that's something that I see the church desperately needs around the world, that we would start to walk as the light, people of rest, people who are confident, and people who know they're truly loved by God and can shine the light of Jesus no matter where they are to all people. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you right now for your blessing over this morning. I thank you, God. I'm going to let everybody go because I've got a bunch of child, children out there being looked after by our Rock Kids leaders. Father, I thank you that um, what you've done here this morning, Father, is, is given us a word to be the light of the world. Father, I could preach a thousand words, but Lord, but one touch of your Holy Spirit in every single one of us right now would make us glow greater than when we came in. Father, don't let us hide the light. But let us be the light you've called us to be because we are now the light of the world until Jesus comes back. And I thank you, God. This is you who does this. This is you who moves through us and this is you who shines through us. If you've come here to the Rock Church for the first time and you've never been here before and you've never given your heart to Jesus Christ, if you've never asked Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins, I would I just right now, if you've never done that, you're not even sure why you would want to do that. Well, the Bible says this, that all have sinned and fallen short of who God is, his goodness, his way of doing life, his way to be saved. There's no other name under the heaven or earth in which we can be saved except through Jesus Christ. If you've never asked Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins, today's your day. And when we see you next week, you will look different. You might even look different when you go out to the cafe, actually. I can testify to that a thousand times. Father, if there's anybody here that doesn't know you, Father, give them the, the capacity to just lift their hand right now. If that's you, just well, everybody close their eyes, just raise your hand. I'll see you. I know there's visitors here today, but I don't know where you are in Christ. So, Father, I thank you for today. If that was you and you wanted to raise your hand, please see me straight after this meeting and just have a chat to me and I'll make it really clear that there's a heaven awaits you and that's where you want to go. You do not want to go to hell. Jesus died for your sins and he'll take every part of that guilt or shame that you perhaps are carrying and he'll wipe it away from you and you'll be a brand new creation and he'll give you the free gift of eternal life in heaven with him and beyond in Jesus name. Amen. So all of us who have had this veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord who is spirit makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. You church, you are the light of the world. That little sign up there, you probably thinking that green and white sign, I've said it before, you probably think that is that's where you what, where you head if there's a fire in the house. But um, that's a really rare thing. But what can happen right now, what you do, you see that sign. I mean, that's a reminder for you to run out and tell people about Jesus. All right? That's what you need to be doing. Run out and be the light of the world. Go and glow for Jesus. Amen? Amen. Thanks, church.